Okay, I'm officially back on Nostalgy. Where today? I finally had. What be, what, what's going on? Hold on. My ring's in the wrong border. Okay. So this that area over there is a foretold where the foretold uh, villager train will be. And that's where the little enchantment area is going to be. Let's pick those trees right over there. But before before we get get into that, let's let's go over to another to another world where I actually figured out the path that I'm going to be using for each for each of the builds, something like that. Okay, so this is this is the normal me, the new you guys know, no, and sort of church, I guess, <laughs> kind of friends. And right next to me, you see a whole pallet of the other wood types that there are on the server. I couldn't believe how many there are. And look at them, they look so cool. Like this one looks like a mirror. Look. Like if you had like if you had one of these in your build, hold on, yeah. If you had one of these in your in your build like this, you can essentially make what's called a mirror of some sort, a a dark mirror. That is so cool. I didn't realize there was so much material to work with, and I just work with like the base stuff. Also, it's nice and there's so much there's so much wood over here, and thankfully and thanks to and thank and thankfully with help of poet, I get to I get access to most of these woods. Some of them don't even have a complete set. For example, the cinnamon stuff, they don't have a complete set over there. And also the withered stuff. Not sure we could be getting with that. Can you do something with that? As a crafting recipe. And so is this one, Palo Verde, does not complete set. Oh well. Um, now these, uh, this looks cool. Like, there's even glass over here. And the reason why we're here today, the reason why we're starting here as well as the other one, is because of this. This I love design idea, so I wanted to do like a dripstone floor, like I said, in one of the videos. But I could have found like a, a good, a good vanilla Minecraft wood that can match with that, apart from copper. But that's kind of hard to come up with. Well, I mean, we're doing a dripstone case, so that's very easy to come up. But I want to melt all the copper and whatnot. That's gonna be quite a hassle. And plus the stand, plus the standard wood stuff, like oak through all that stuff, it's not gonna match very well. Unless you count acacia, but it's kind of like was it fur was it for fur logs? However, they match pretty de pretty darn well. Look at that. You can see the match tone this one to this one. Even in this one, it's a little makeshift house I, I made as well. Showcasing, yeah, look, it does blend in well with this. You have your so you can floor dripstone, and you have your you think you think your whole build made of fur, which kind of. It's kind of the experiment idea for, for my for my villager for my villager trading hall system to get a lot of fur logs. Now here's something I've been kind of tripping upon. So I have two ideas for the enchantment area. These are juniper or or mahogany logs. Alright, juniper looks nice and kind of looks it kind of blends in with. So the juniper for the aesthetics looks nice. And since we're near maple logs, I'm pretty sure it could blend well with the maple wood as well. Let me see here. So we surround them with trees like this. How would this blend? So yeah, it does blend with the dark tone and everything. But, but then I was thinking, we already have enough dark tone, so I was thinking of a little more of a contrast area. We would have the same tone, the same tone of all trees, but inside it's like a little bit of a hog or anything. A bit of a contrast, like something that helps stand out from it. Stand out, right? Yeah, so I was wondering how... Yeah, so it was a mixture between blending well and standing out. I'm more on the tins with the standing out because we already have enough dark stuff. We already made stuff with rubber and maple log, and that's kind of our part of the dark thing. So, and it's plus it's an enchantment, it's an enchantment area. Like, so I want to like, like stand out, something magical. This feels magical. So this one has a bit, a little bit more nicer texture, like a more medieval style thing. So yeah, I'm kind of torn between mahogany and juniper. So yeah, that's a general. what I am sure about is about the trade hall to be made of fur. To be a fir wood, and luckily we seem to be near a forest full of fir of fir trees. And also, I also really, also I just realized this as I'm putting the villagers were in a fir forest. This is the spot where, where the where the first where I found the villagers villagers for sand. <clears throat> for sand. So to make this out of fir look would be like oh, oh wow nostalgic or homely feel. So yeah, it's made of spruce logs, but I'm eh? yeah, still gonna use fir. I guess why not? Also, what the heck? Have anyone been here recently? Hold on, I just noticed that. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's a dirt path here. Have, what have Enderman been doing while I was away? 
And so I decided to just mine down the first trees. And luckily without the adventure ring, I was able to just mine from the top all the way to the bottom. And let me tell you, these trees produce like a lot of, of wood. Maybe because they're so big. See, I was able to, to knock that down in the ballpark to get some of them. Well, I also collected the saplings and fell from the trees. And also, around here, no joke. Literally, as I was trying to clear up the tree, the server just straight up crashed again. And when I locked back down, I was suffocated inside of a tree. <laughs> Luckily, uh, I was quick thinking, and I just had my axe. Also, I had regen, so I just... And also, fun fact, some of the trees I mined down magically reappeared. So, I just had to mine them down again. Luckily, it's like, it's like the war incident, the logs didn't get lost. So, I was able to just remind and then just get more wood than the whole issue. So here's me flying around thinking, oh, I should probably just get the drip sword to land to the floor. So that's where I'm going next. So I went out of case and just started to, to find a certain dripstone patches that I could mine down. Like, and in like, any case, I would least likely revisit again because these caves are so large, let me tell you. Also, avoiding like any falling point interest that I just saw right there. I almost got hit there. And yeah. So with the dripstone I had left, I decided to like make it make an outline or start making an outline for the fourth flooring. As you can see right here, I decided to make uh, like a few blocks inside of the stairway next to the iron farm. Not not as close, but pretty darn close to the, the, the iron golem stone spawn. And you can see here, I ran into like a patch of natural land that I wanted to keep. So I decided to make make a division while well, keeping the small pond. But also, like, the shortest of the farms. Oh, yeah. Uh, somehow, I just remembered I had a dirt steel shovel. So now I can just easily mine all, all this dirt. But I haven't faithfully spent some time doing so by hand. So that's a good thing to do. Okay, so I finally finished the outline of the floor. And then the floor using the drift we were able to mine from the, for the little cave expedition. This is the current floor plans for the Builder Trading Hall. We'd have a section of filters here, section of filters there, each classified. And get this, in order to fill the rest of the floor, we need 642 blocks of dripstone, which is 10 stacks and 2 blocks. That's how much dripstone we need. Okay, so we gotta go to our base and see the struggle box real quick. So what I'm gonna do is gonna... So I'm gonna I grab some iron from the iron problem from there. And what I'm gonna do is gonna spend on because I know each each part each iron picks will basically be able to mine at least 250 blocks each. Or was it 256? I think it was 256 actually. So each iron block will be each iron pickaxe can mine up to 256 blocks. And I'm gonna use those to my advantage. So so once we hit so once we basically break I'll break all these iron pickaxes, mining only dripstone with them. We should we should be more than we should have more than enough to finish the flooring. If not excess. And so I went down to a dripstone rich part of the cave where I would easily be able to buy some dripstone. Also, light up certain caves that I didn't light up before. Also, discovering this in the process. What the heck? There's a lot of caves here. I didn't know this was here. Oh, that's cool. Is that when we get to have axolotls in this world now? Well, then, world, world, world. I mean, base world. Around my, around my area of living. That's what, that's what I mean. But alright. Cool. Okay, well, I'm not here for, for a lush case, but it's nice to know this is here. I gotta remember to check this one out. I gotta remember to check this one out later, because right now, I gotta go get some dripstone. Thankfully, most of the dripstone that I was able to find were in, de in that end area, so I could just easily mine them without wanting to ruin the aesthetics of, of most of the areas. However, some of them were a bit too high, so I had to mine some of the local gravel that was in the area, so I could at least dig it to, to the dripstones. There were some ores around there, but I was more focused on dripstone at the time, and it didn't really bother to mine out the ores, such as iron and redstone, and also some, some novice-related ores as well. And to see right here, I did eventually end up mining out entire chunks upon chunks of and chunks of dripstone to the point where I was literally filling up an, a makeshift aquifer. As you see right here, there was some water flowing, which did create a bit of bit of a bit of a hassle to get through. But we finally finished building our little makeshift aquifer, which is a lot of sad because we're never gonna come back here again. So. 
consider this like a final top. <laughs> it's kind of good because you wouldn't believe how much work I put to make, get the water working properly. But don't forget that. Let's actually fill in the floor, shall we? Okay. So, the flooring is finally in place. We have the dripstone floor. All we need is it's a fur wood over here. Oh, which we should have enough of. Now, let's see here. I'll have the villager stuff over here. Villager face in this back hall. I'll have the persuade spot open in this one of that room. For the people to, for someone to go inside here. And then wind up in the next area. And I mean the same idea. The villager should be on this side of, on this side of the building. Not the other way. Okay, so before okay, so before I plant anything, let's see where which each villager station. So this will be like one station, I believe. We'll have the logs over here, we'll have the workstation there, the villager trapped in the land, and the, the thing over here. Okay, it's all just rinse and repeat from here. So it needs to be where, where the log where the fur log the wood will be here. Divide each villager. So each side will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12 villagers each side. And this side also. This space will be open like to any like, you know, it'll be like a sort of a lounge area, I guess. Well, lounge for people that, you know, works too. Maybe like a chest area, actually, hold on. Either a lounge or chest area, I don't know about that. So we have a whole wide open space here. We'll figure something out. Let's, let's we'll cross the bridge when we get there. So yeah, 12 on that side, 12 on this side as well. That's the main, that's the main goal for now. Alright, it's really coming along. It's really coming along, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, to put it off, I finally decided to, you know, to, find, to finally build the darn thing because our armor is depleting as well. We can't go, we can't go adventuring with, with our armor is about to break. Okay, that's like one, that's like adventuring 101. You need good armor. I'm gonna leave this as like a little community pond thing. Like, I might decorate this area here. That's the reason why I made this division because I didn't want to ruin this part. The first floor done. I may build the second floor, but rather the floor may be a fir wood, not dripstone, I think. Because that's, cause that's proven to be a bit of a hassle to get, I think. Maybe there may not be, maybe there may not need, even need to be a second floor. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm pretty excited to see where, th where this takes me. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe it took about a week to do this, <laughs> to do this, and it wasn't even supposed to last a week, I was, I've just been tired from doing, from doing in real life stuff, IRL stuff, so I've been taking like some breaks, but man, it took a lot of motivation, but it's finally done, it's finally done, it's finally done, the villager training hall is finally done, oh my gosh. 
gosh, I can't believe how long this took. I don't know how, how anyone else would do. It takes a lot of motivation. Oh my gosh, I was able to... Oh my gosh. Finally, at long last. I spent hours upon hours in the interior. Oh. And look at it, so smooth, yeah. But as you see, I decided to add a second floor because, well, I may need more villagers. <laughs> yeah, look at that. So smooth as well. Well, it's three bucks tall. So not as, but yeah. So yeah, each so each sec so each section will have like twelve villagers. And that <laughs> and yeah, like I said, I decided for the second floor because because there's a good chance I may need more villagers in the future. In the future, stuff that can trade like material items or even enchantment books, because those seem to be the most important one, especially for my armor. Yeah. But yeah, that's the interior so far. The exterior looks a little bit classy. So I went for the old style. I, I may add some decoration, or may not add some decorations to make this a little less plain. Well, I don't think it's that plain. But I see here, I decided to add, add a little more detail to the roofing. I can see here I use dark oak stairs because I figured I'd blend even better with, with the fur logs. And also almost closely matches the uh, the, fur, the fur logs right here, yeah. Rather than just, just fill up the entire space, I decided to just go all out and just build like a tent like structure with here, lock support, and also some dark oak logs right here. Like, So it'll be like a lumber support system. Like any logs we, we find, we just chop them up here. Here, see so, yeah. it? Okay, got some locks here, and got some locks here. You know, just in case, like, for, de for decorating. For reasons. See, I just, see, I just hold, see, I just hold tent area, be like a log storage system. For case we need more, more logs of some sort. I may, I may add some more logs, just to add the detail. I also might add some machinery to help put the logs over there as well. But problem with that, the main, the main build is done. All we need to do now is get to get the villagers inside the inside the little cubbies, and that should be it. And yeah, like I said, this little area is basically like the little community area. I may add some of the flowers I mine them and put them right here. And as you may notice, the the fur doors look at look at the fur doors. They look so kind of cool. But also, here's a magic trick. There's there's a thing on the bottom left and on the top right. But when you open it, it's magically on the top right and the bottom left. Top right, top left, and bottom right. Look at that. Magic. This way, and that's this way. You see that, right? <laughs> I just I just noticed that now. Also in the second entrance right here. It's the same thing. It's, it's looking like one of those little builds that people go to when they're retired. <laughs> hey, after all that, I tried to just... Yeah, and now, so now this, this tree is, full, is free of any foreign trees. And I just discovered that there's a cave down here, which I just noticed. There's, a, there's this Enderman that's been chilling in there since then. But yeah, other than that, this build is finally complete. The hardest part, the hardest part was was obviously waiting for the trees to grow over there. That I had to temper the plants over there. But other than that, it went pretty well. But again, yeah, it was a hassle to get all the materials, and when you run out, you actually have to wait for them. Either wait for the materials to regrow, or actually go somewhere else and mine the materials. Especially, especially the dark oak wood. Like I, I literally had to go to a different area just to get dark oaks, just to get like dark oak saplings. Like from one tree, luckily, I was able to get dark oak saplings. And now, and now I have enough to, I have to regrow like dark oak wood whenever I need to. So that'll be something. I guess all the afternoon is to make the enchantment area. Right around here, like right around here. I'm still torn between juniper and mahogany. What? But we'll get, but we'll get there. Like eventually, I may decide, or you guys may help decide. Either one of those two options is fine. Oh, so you may have noticed there's an iron golem here, standing there. I don't know if that's gonna stop the thing. I know the iron golems who are free roaming; they don't stop the thing. I don't know if this one stops it. I don't think so. I think it still does produce iron somewhat. If it does stop, if it does stop, let me see here. Let me actually make a make a marking point. Marking point. Yeah. So thirty nine here. If it goes up to here, then we know it still works. 
Also, this chest filling up, so it may be tough for this chest to start filling up as well. I may just get rid of the torches and replace them with like other lighting areas. Other lighting stuff, like lanterns or anything other than fucking. I'd, I'd say most likely lanterns, but that may hit your head right there. Regardless, this was this is what. Regardless, this is one of the most ambitious builds. That. Well, let's see the villager trading hall. Yeah, that, that was alright. The wool farm. I just took a little bit of effort to make the tent. But this one. This took a lot of effort. Let me see. I think this is one of the many first builds I've ever actually had so much effort that it's had to spend like hours upon hours on it. Because these can spend like a few hours and then like a couple of minutes. Hours. Not. That's how crazy this is. Like, you know, that's how crazy this project is. Like, and I hope this pays off. Like, this pays off. We should have enough villagers in there. If I run out of villagers, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just deactivate the kill switch of the vill of the village reader and have more villagers. Simple as that. See, so yeah, after this episode, I may take a break. I may take a break for a bit. Well, anyway, we'll just just rest rest for a bit. But yeah. That's about that's about it for this for this episode. Like, I can't believe we actually finally finished it. I finished it. I mean, has anything? I mean, has anything happened while I was building it? Any notes? No notes. Okay, good. That means nothing. Nothing magical is happening. No strange. Okay. A wandering trader came by. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that was shown in the uh, time the time that was but uh, but he offered this an ocean ancient city map. For a couple of emeralds that I compass. Which is huge because I haven't seen an ancient city. Like, moreover, I've never been in an ancient city before. This would technically be the first time I've ever gone to an ancient city, ever. And I'm kind of excited. Though, as you can see there, it looks like it's, it's supposed to be an ocean monument of some sort. That's what it looks like. But it says ancient city. And as I say, it's from Minecraft, so it may just be an ocean monument, not an ancient city. But still, though, it's pretty. I'm pretty excited. I haven't, I haven't raided a monument yet, at least not on the, at least not on the server. Definitely haven't gone to an ancient city at all, unless you count that one, unless you count that one time. But yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. I'm kind of excited to see what this. I'm kind of excited to see what this takes. Me. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what this takes me, but like I said, I'll just, I'm, I might just take a break for a while. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know you guys take the comments this time down below. Let me know what kind of villagers you like or something. Who knows? Hopefully I'll get a, hopefully I'll get a many villagers soon. And we can finally get this armor gear. Or get some nether raid. What do you guys think? Dura steel or nether raid? Which, which is going to be the most valuable armor at this point. Alright, many thoughts, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.